Welcome to our fourth week of Crazy Happy. We've been in this sermon series, and um, when we start this sermon series, or when we start every week, I have to kind of remind us or, or bring us kind of back to a point and say, who is God? Right? We, we think about who God is, and many of us will say, well, God is love. Right? I mean, the God that I believe in is the God of love. He's the beginning and the end. He's the, some people may call him the yin and the, the yang, right? What, what is, what was, what shall be? And then we ask the question, why did God create me? And it's a fair question. I mean, I, I uh, wake up some mornings and go, why did you create me? I mean, my life right now is, can be kind of messy. Why did God create you? Well, he didn't create you because he needs you to exist, right? He's an omnipotent God, a loving God. He created you for a specific purpose. He created you because he wants a relationship with you. He created you because he loves you. And then the next fair question is, well, then how does God want me to live? And here's the big hint. Not only is it in the sermon bumper, but it's all about your life. He wants you to live this crazy, happy life. And what we've been surprised with as we've gone through this sermon series is that the crazy, happy life, as per Jesus and as per the way that we were designed by the God of the universe, is found in some pretty unusual places, right? It's found in, in places like mourning. It's found in places like meekness. It's found in places like being humble, things that you don't usually think about unless you're really programmed and tuned into God. And when you reflect on that, you go, well, God created this life with some of those ups and downs, and it's wonderful to know that he also created me to be happy during those ups and downs. We find them in unexpected places. So life's full of choices. Right? I mean, every morning you wake up and I make a huge choice every morning and that's to, to, to hit the snooze button or not. Oh, to hit the snooze button or not. Because if I hit the snooze button, I know that I got nine minutes. And because of that nine minutes, then I'm going to be going, baby, gee, get up, come on, you got to get your shoes on because we're going to be late and we can't be late to school. You make choices all day. We have to make decisions every single day, every single moment of our lives. And, and you've got a choice. You can love God, love the person, love the one that created you. You can choose to do that or not. Period. You have a choice to make. You can love him back or not. He's not going to force it on you. But either way, we're, we're constantly choosing what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, and why <laughs> we're going to do it. How many of you reflect back on the, why did I do that? I do that all the time. I mean, really, what we're trying to come to terms with in this, in this whole series is this crazy happy life actually happens on the other side of those decisions, right? On the other side of the choices that we make. That's where crazy happy happens. And if we've chosen to put our faith and trust in Jesus, then we've chosen to honor the Lord in all different areas of our life. Not just when we feel like doing it. Or you make another choice. And you've decided to live in rebellion to God. You're doing one or the other. You're either going to love him or you're going to live in rebellion against God because you feel that you can overrule him. Or somebody in your life overrules him. Or you want to get this stuff right now, you know it's not really godly, so you're going to overrule God and you're going to live in rebellion to God. Whatever your number of reasons are, you either love him or you don't. And so today, we're going to look about your choice. It's all focused on you and the choice that you make. Or do you choose to make it a crazy, awesome, happy life or not? Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for a crazy, happy life. Thank you for choices. 
thank you for grace. Thank you for peace and love. And Father God, we ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts is pleasing to you, O Father, our rock and our redeemer. We ask that all of your messages here, whether spoken or unspoken, are experienced by everyone. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ and all of God's, chil uh, all of God's people say, Amen. Well, I have to tell you, I, um, <clears throat> for a while, the path of, of my life was in rebellion to God. <laughs> I still have moments, without a doubt. Right? But I was guided by, you know, society. How many people are guided by society? Right? By, by peer pressure. Think about the different ages of your life. You know, think about when you were 16. How, how did you, you know, structure your life with based on what your friends say? Are you popular? You know. I was guided by ladies many times in my life. Put everything aside. I'm going to do everything if I can get a date with that one. Right? I wanted to impress her. And then I was guided, you know, I, I, I was in rebellion to God. I said, I'm going I'm to be the best skier there is because that's really cool because the ladies like the skiers. I was living in Colorado, right? And you could wear those tight ski pants and everything. So I thought that'd be, that'd be good for me. I'd do that. So I uh, did the ski patrol thing, and I even had to do the overachiever and, and you know, d go through certain first aid things and EMT things, and I was too young to do it, and I had to get special permission and all this stuff, and, you know, the overachiever of me. Uh, oh, and then I thought, I was, I was still living in, in rebellion to God, and I, I thought, you know, I'll be this international business guy, and I became one of those international business guys, and it was very cool for a while. Until you realize, for me, I didn't want to live on an airplane. I wanted to have kids someday. I wanted to settle down. And, and I was never fulfilled in that. And then eventually I surrendered to God. I, I said, okay, I'm going to turn off the noise. I'm going to turn off the peer pressure. I'm going to turn off the ladies. I'm going to turn off all the things that, that are really cool in life and that I feel like I'm supposed to do. And I'm going to listen to God. And here I stand. How are you living your life? Oh, that's a hard question. How are you living your life? How are you choosing to live your life? Based on what the latest trend says you do? Do you live your life based on, you know, what, you, what your football team's doing? Do you live your life based on what's happening at work, based on what's happening in the world, based on what someone says you should do, based on what, oh, your friend's friends has, based on keeping up with the Joneses? How are you choosing to live your life? Or does someone else choose that for you? Do you feel like you're always maybe responding or reacting to things? I, I was in that mode for so long where you just you wake up and it's like, oh, you're reacting and you're responding and you're reacting and you're responding. And at some point you go, could I be proactive with my own life? I want to live my life. I don't want to have to be responding to stuff all the time. Oh, there's the phone again, another collection call. Hello. Sorry, he's not here. Right? Because if all you're doing is responding, then you are a product of something. Or are you being proactive? Do you wake up in the morning? Are you on this journey? Because in your, in your heart and your soul, you know this is what you should be doing. And if you are, great news. That's God speaking to you. He does this all throughout the Bible. Let's take a look at Galatians 5, 16 through 18. We're pretty, we're pretty uh, um, heavy on scripture today. It says, for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit. Uh-oh, <laughs> I'm in trouble right there. And the desires of the spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Ooh, think about that what you really want to do in your heart versus that chocolate, chocolate, delicious bar that's calling my name. But I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. 
But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. This verse teaches us the importance of making choices. And it also reinforces that we have free will. God gave us free will. You can make your own choice. You're either going to walk in the spirit or you're going to walk in the flesh. Which one? What are you going to pick? It's very important that we choose the, the spirit. When we walk in the spirit, we're not going to fulfill the lusts and the passions and, and the flesh. You're not going to do everything for that. And the idea the, of the flesh here that I'm saying is not necessarily the, the skin. Right? It, it's speaking of other parts of our nature that's in rebellion to God. I mean, have you ever felt, we talked about this last night at Bible study, you ever felt like you just weren't made for this place? Well, you should, because you weren't made for this place. You were made by the creator of the universe for that place. Everything else was created by the creator of the universe, and he said, this is good, and then he made you, and he said, you will have dominion over everything else. So yeah, if you feel like, gee, I just don't belong here sometimes, you're right, you don't, because you're going to heaven. <laughs> That's where you belong. That's what you were made for. And so the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit wars against the flesh, and we have this constant back and forth. And when I'm talking about the flesh, the example is doing things that are self-centered. Right? The idea that, that we're doing what we do because we're going to receive some sort of payoff. I always use the old lady crossing the street. You know, if you, you see the old lady crossing the street, go running over, hey, I'm, I'm going to help her cross the street. Why? Because if I help six old ladies cross the street, then I'm going to heaven. No, it's not how it works. But if you see that same old lady crossing the street, and you run over, and you go, I'm going to help her. Why? Because I want to, because that's the guy that I am. Different flesh versus spirit. I mean, they're completely contrary to one another. The, the two cannot perfectly coexist. And it makes me think of the cartoon where there's an angel on one side and the, and the devil on the, on the other. You've seen this before, right? Yeah, it happens all the time. And you get in that situation, you're like, oh, do I go, do, I do the self-centered, what's my payoff? Or do I look at that little angel on the side? You know, it's all about love. I mean, we have to choose one or the other. So we want to lean on God so we can walk in the Spirit. And when we walk in the Spirit, we won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And if you're led by the Spirit, then you're actually being freed from the constraints of the law because you're now walking in the law of love. So guess what? Some of those things that you really want to do in the flesh, you're probably going to be able to that's what God wants you to do. We see the same kind of choices clearly in Colossians 3. Then he just lays it right out for us. He says, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. All right, here we come. You ready? Here's all our earthly stuff. Sexual immorality, impurity, passions, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry, putting something before God. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them. <laughs> yes, I did. But now you must put on all, put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another. The truth will set you free, and I promise it will. Seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. I mean, the Bible will say, choose you this day who you are going to serve. And some of you are going to have to do that right now before you walk out of here. Who are you going to serve? You may have to make a decision and say, you know what? It's about time that I'm focusing on me and me 
need him because he created me for a purpose and he loves me. So guess what? I'm not meeting you tonight. I'm taking myself out to dinner because God wants me to take a long, deep breath. Maybe. Are you going to be sincere and truthful? Oh, that's liberating. Or something else. You know, lie to this one, lie to that one. Remember the lie that you told to that one. And then when this one comes over, because he's going to meet that one, you got to tell this one the lie that you told that one so they get the lie straight. But then this one has a different lie, and you better tell them that way so they, this person doesn't think about you that way. And this lie is going that way. Uh huh? Or sincere and truthful. You get to choose. That's how cool our God is. You get to choose. Choosing to serve the Lord is always the best thing for us because our normal choices, we're human, ready? They're destructive. Check out our normal choices right here. The Bible says, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are, here we go, uh, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now I will tell you, I have practiced many of those things. And when you choose the flesh, you get very specific outcomes. You do. The normal choices that we make are us living in rebellion against God. And if we're not for the grace of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit, our normal choices end up having these destructive consequences and people get hurt. Think about that list. And every single one of those people get hurt. And when our lives are lived in rebellion of God, we're sinning against God. And that's totally uncomfortable. It's horrible. You're hiding from God all the time. You're shutting him out. You're, you're turning him off at every, at every turn until you get what you want. And then you go, oh, let me just uh, I'll go to church. And we're also sinning, here's the big one, is that we're also sinning against ourselves. And we're sinning against others in society. You're hurting your very self. I mean, it's a great reminder, if we choose to live in the flesh, there's going to be huge destruction. And we need the help of the Lord to make the decisions that lead us into this crazy, happy And this is the exact opposite of choosing the flesh, which leads to destruction. So let the spirit bear fruit in your life. So here's what happens on the other side. So we make all those bad decisions, or we can live on the other side of it. Let's take a look at Galatians 5, 22 and 23. I love this. I come back to it all the time. This is how, by the way, I keep myself in check. The fruit of the spirit. What are we supposed to be doing, God? I, I need, I, you know, I, <laughs> I'm stubborn and I'm dense. You know, <laughs> lay it out for me. And God does. He just lays it out for you. Here you go. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. Oh, I'm feeling better already after li reading that horrible list before. <laughs> oh, right? Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Against such things, there is no law. Wouldn't you love to meet someone that has those attributes? Wouldn't you love people to say, wow, I'm looking at people around here that have those attributes. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for putting them in my life. And there's the fruit again. And when we choose to walk in the fruit of the Spirit and not fulfill the lusts of the flesh, then guess what? The outcomes are completely different. 
these new spirit-inspired outcomes, those are called the fruit. And we're fruity. I don't know, can I say that? I guess I can. We're fruity. This immediately reminds me of what John said in 1580. He says, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. And he's talking about the fruit of the Spirit. So you will be my disciples. I mean, this crazy, happy person that's finding crazy happiness, yes, when you mourn and you're being comforted. Yes, when you're meek. Yes, when you're being humble. This crazy, happy person is bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Is that person. Because of their faith in Jesus. Because they've made that decision in the morning to hit the sleep button. But when the alarm goes off again, they click on the Florida Faith Church app. Please download it. And read the verse of the day. And because of their faith in Jesus, they're making the choice to abide in Jesus and to choose God in every situation. To get in those situations and go, what would Jesus do? God glorifying fruit is what characterizes their life. So you see how making those right choices that you make, nobody else, don't put it on anybody else. It is you. Make no mistake, you. You get to make the choice of how you are going to experience life based on if you choose God or you choose to go in rebellion to God. We all got that choice to make. So you got to surrender to Jesus. And to drive it all home, the Apostle Paul tells it to us again in, in Galatians. He says, live and walk in the Spirit. Here it is. And those who are, Christ, who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. If the Spirit's the source of your life, then you also want the Spirit to direct your course, and you can also lay your heavy burdens and everything else on the Spirit and say, God, you put me here. I'm following the Spirit. This reminds us of God's plan for happiness for us. The crazy, happy way of life is literally life in the Spirit. Life lived with the Spirit, in and through the Spirit, 2 Corinthians. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Thank you. And we all, with unveiled faces, be proud of it, Beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. That's the transformation from the inside out. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. A beautiful freedom comes from living and walking in the Spirit where transformation happens. You make that decision in the morning to, to walk in the Spirit. So this crazy, happy sermon series has, has been a pretty amazing journey together. I have to tell you, I've had to reflect on many things in my life and go, oh yeah, that is where you find happiness. And if you haven't seen it, you can go to our YouTube page, it's all there. And this is just the beginning. The key is for us to choose God's crazy, happy way of life by walking in the Spirit. And this is going to change the decisions you make every single day. From what you eat, to the time you get up, to who you're hanging out with, to what you're watching, to what websites you are hitting. So here's my challenge for you today. 
respond to Jesus. Be still. Know he is God. Listen. And respond to him. And let him lead you into this crazy, happy life. Lord, thank you for crazy, happy life. Thank you for creating us with free will. Lord, sometimes we, we're doing the best that we can. And sometimes we may make those decisions where we choose to walk without you, or we choose to turn our back on you. And Father God, we ask that when we're about to make those decisions, that you call it to our attention. That before I mess up, Lord, <laughs> stop me and give me the wisdom and the learning and the grace to say, wait a minute, that's not what I want to do. Stop. Turn my back on it. Repent. And walk the other way towards the Spirit. Run towards the Spirit. Lord, help us to choose you in every decision. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. And all of God's children say, Amen. Well, this church, as, as you heard at the beginning of the, of the broadcast, we are poised and we are establishing programs and things that move in the hearts of our world, of our community, and our goal is to change the world. Our goal is a revival. When we start looking at the numbers, I had this big meeting this morning with lots of pastors, a couple hundred pastors. And we were talking about what has happened since COVID and, and how God is moving in our communities and, uh, and across the world. And it is you that are, that are on this broadcast now or, or us here in the sanctuary and our friends. And it's time for Christians to stand up because no response to a world that is getting ugly, is a response. And so you've got a choice. You can tell somebody God loves them. <laughs> they come to church, hand them a church card. And whether it's this church or any other church, get them to Jesus somehow. That's what we are doing here. And giving to this church is how it happens. Giving in and through this church, if that's giving of your time, you know how much you've been blessed, and you know what blessings you have. If, that, if that's your time, if that's your talent, if that's your financial resources, then we need all of those things to help to advance the kingdom of God. If you choose to give your financial resources, there's many ways to do it. When you walk out of the sanctuary tonight, there's a, a wooden box on the back with flowers. You can give there your financial resources. If you're online, uh, there's, you click give, there's one up here on the uh, app, right there on the apps down there. Um, there's, find that button that says give, and you can give any amount. You can also text the word faith give to the number 77977, and you can give any amount there. Let's glorify God as a unified church family and give as he has given to 